Because you know what? Many businesses and many people are coming online and people use blogs to learn things. Just the other day, I was thinking about getting some books for my nine-year-old daughter and I searched on Google and what did I find? Mom blogs, sharing the best books for nine-year-old girl. And if you wanna start a blog, I'm here to give you a little overview of starting a blog, the expectations, what you need, uh, writing your blog posts and things like that. And I'm going to share my new niche site. So hang around to the end where I share that with you. So just to let you know, I make most of my income from my blogs. It's helped my husband continue to stay home. It's helped me stay home. And my twins know nothing of it. They think all parents stay home. We do things together. We have lots of family time and hopefully we'll get to do some traveling in the coming years. So I'm really looking forward to that. And it's all thanks to blogging. And I want to help you get started, whether you're a mom just like me that wants to have that creative outlet and see if you can monetize that passion. Or if you're just sick of working and you just want to start something on the side or you're younger and you don't have a family yet and you still want to just start a blog. All of this can happen for you and help you make money. Let me just go through an overview to get you excited and started over on my blog twins mommy i do have a guide here on start a blog it's for mom bloggers the process is still the same i recommend that you first figure out your niche and what you're going to be talking about this is probably the most important step if you want to start making money with your blog you need to find a topic that people will first of all know and understand and need help with and that are the second that are willing to get that help by paying for it basically you need to find those niches and how do you do that the biggest way you can do that is through pinterest seeing what's popular on pinterest and then looking to you and what you are searching for online i just told you that the other day i went on google to search for some books so something like that a motherhood site with you know book recommendations and recipes and things like that. I go online all the time for recipes. I go online for fashion, for beauty, for <laughs> lots of things. Uh, I go online. People are doing that same thing. So finding those like topics and then narrowing down to your audience. You know, Twins Mommy is a site for mom bloggers. It's not a site for moms with twins. It's a site for mom bloggers who want to make money blogging. There are many blogs that are owned by moms that aren't Interest, they're not interested in making money for that purpose, but so I don't speak to them. So it's very specific. So if you want to start, let's say a knitting blog, who is your target audience? Is it just moms? Is it young kids? You want to do knitting for kids? You need to sort of figure that out. And it, that's where your profitable niche can sort of rise up and you can find that one niche. So it, even though it's for moms, this could be for a blog for anything. It doesn't have to be a mom blog with motherhood topics. It could be anything. But the first step is to figure out your niche. Your niche Niche is the main topic that you're going to be writing about. Now you can go two routes. You can do lifestyle niche. So all lifestyle topics under your blog. I wouldn't do more than three. So you would have like motherhood recipes and crafts, like something like that. Or it's just one topic. It's all about knitting. It's all about gardening. It's all about blogging. It's all about pregnancy. It's all about beauty. It's all about hair. Pick something that you can just focus on and know that you can blog about it for years to come. You know, recently niche sites are hard to develop content for years and years. One of my sites is just freelance writing. And so for years, that's all I did. But then I hit a wall. I couldn't think of other topics. I had to sort of slightly broaden to jobs with freelancing. So all the different types of jobs with freelancing. And then I brought in a little bit with writing. How do you write certain things? How do you write a case study? How do you write a resume? How do you write these things, an email? I was able to broaden my niche to get more content ideas. When you do have a niche site, that's something to consider is, you know, you need to be able to blog about it for five, 10 years or however long your blog is succeeding. Something with a lifestyle blog is much easier to find content. I have a lifestyle blog on Smart Mom Ideas. It's very easy to find content for that site. The only thing is that it's harder to get Google to know what my site is about. Niche sites, definitely make more money in the long run than my lifestyle blogs, but I might be turning a leaf on that. I've seen lifestyle blogs do phenomenally well on Google, on Google. So I know it's possible. I want you to know that if you want to start a lifestyle blog, you can, and you can monetize that and you can really make good money with it. I have seen other lifestyle bloggers do that. There's a lot to consider right there with just a niche. So take the time to discover that, that one niche topic. 
So I have these questions. What am I passionate about? Think about that. Is there a need for your niche? If you search for it, do you actually see tons of blogs? That's a good sign. It's a good sign when you see tons of mom blogs that talk about book reviews. That's popular. There's a need for that. And then can you monetize it? Go to these sites. Are they monetized? Do they have a workbook for sale? Do they have educational curriculums for sale? Do they have an online course, a membership, things like that, other digital products for sale that tells you that it's a viable niche that you can start. The next thing is to choose your blogging platform. I personally choose my host as Bluehost. So you can grab the link, I'll show it right now, to start your Bluehost account. That's your hosting platform or blogging platform. There are other hosting providers, but I can tell you Bluehost has a phenomenal customer service. They are cheap to start, definitely one of the cheapest out there, but they have very good customer service. You may have heard otherwise, but that's the old Bluehost. Bluehost has really stepped up the game lately in the past couple of years. And you can tell comments of my course students right here, telling, sharing in my Facebook group, the customer support and how great Bluehost is right here. Bluehost has very good customer service. It says here, I have a few technical questions that they're gonna ask Bluehost. I said that they answered my question quickly and you can have great success just phoning them. That's great. They use the phone here, super helpful. This is a big glowing testimonial for Bluehost support. So if you ever have any problems using Bluehost, they are more than happy to support you and help you through this, right? So that's why I personally recommend Bluehost for my course students, for my blog audience. So let's continue. The next step is a domain name. You need to choose a name that is easy to say and easy to spell. It's very important. Something like twins mommy is very easy to spell. Now I know my name. I have a, a, a name domain. Elna Kane domain. People do mess up my name, but over the years I have built a solid brand. So you can build a solid brand with your name, even if it's difficult to spell. Google knows that if you're talking to one person, um, I am an affiliate for a freelance lawyer and her last name is, I can't say, I don't know how to say it and it's very hard to spell, but I can get to her site with just identifiers, you know, her first name, freelance lawyer, and then parts of her last name and Google can figure it out. If that's the case for you, that's okay. But generally you wanna make your name easy to say and easy to spell. There's lots of uh, craft blogs, mom blogs that have three identifiers, motherkidsandcrafts.com, like something like that would be a perfect blog name. It tells me that they're gonna have motherhood and craft stuff for kids. You can definitely have a blog name that tells you what it's for. Twins Mommy, I bought this domain. It's not like when you think of Twins Mommy, you're, you're probably thinking of like a mom with twins that are doing like motherhood twin stuff. The blog doesn't really normally do that. But again, I have branded myself to be a help for mom bloggers. And I do have twin content as well. Know that if you really die hard on a name that doesn't really represent your blog niche, that is okay. You can brand it, okay? And you think of something like Pop Sugar or you think about like Quick Sprout. You know, those are like, what the heck is a twin? Or Tailwind, like what is Tailwind? Blue host. These are all like names that don't tell you exactly what it is, but they've branded it. And find some variations. Make sure you have a .com. Very important to have a .com. People can find you. I have a hard time with .co. There's a blog that I visit that's .co, but I always put .com and for some reason I can never get the redirect to that. I get something else. So just be careful. I do have a special discount just for my Twins Mommy readers. And now for you, if you are subscribed to my channel, if you're watching this video, you can definitely use this special link. I'll put it up right now, but I'll put the blog post in the comments below so you can click on the link. All right. And here it is where it takes you and then you can get started now. So you press that. So there are three basic plans with using Bluehost. And what's so neat about using Bluehost is that they don't care which plan you choose. I know with some other hosting plans, they really push people who recommend their hosting plans to push the higher tier plans, but Bluehost doesn't. If you wanna get started, you're not quite sure. Basic is wonderful. Basic gets everything done. And I suggest that once you go through the steps here that you know you get the one domain, you can have your free ticket, SSL ticket that protects your site and all of this great stuff here. You can read about it once you invest in the time to learn about that, but you pick basic. And then the next step is to create your new domain or you can skip this step. You can create it later. So let's just create it later. But that's where all the time you spent creating that domain name. Maybe you have a few of them, you can try them out. And this is where you can set up all the information. The one thing I want you to make sure in order to get that uh, basic 
plan. One thing I want you to do is change this to 36 months, to three years. It's a little bit more expensive, but honestly, if you want to not be bothered at the end of the year when you're just getting traction to pay for hosting, I suggest you get the three year plan and you do save the most money. After three years, you do save the most money. So I suggest you get to this plan and then you don't need all of this. You don't worry about this. Uh, don't worry about that. You don't need any of this stuff. And you can still go under $200, start a brand new business with a blog because your blog is your business. If you're making money, it is a business under $200. I mean, that's amazing. Not many businesses can start with only that much money. So that's amazing. And then you have your options to pay. So that's in a nutshell, that's hosting to get your site started. When you go through the plan, the next couple steps, it's going to ask you, you know, what kind of theme do you want? My suggestion is Astra. It's a WordPress theme. Bluehost automatically shoots you through WordPress because WordPress and Bluehost work together and they do phenomenal, a phenomenal job. And I highly suggest WordPress. All my sites are WordPress and then your payment option. And then that's it. After that, the next step will walk you through, you setting up your account information, your password, and then it'll ask you what kind of help you need. You can decide the help. Bluehost automatically assumes that you're gonna have a WordPress site. And I suggest that you go through with that and have a WordPress site. It's all my sites are WordPress. There's tons of support online for using WordPress rather than something else like a Squarespace or Wix. So I suggest you go with that and you'll find lots of support on YouTube, especially for WordPress help. You can always email me if you sign up through my special Bluehost link. You can definitely email me anytime. Let me know that and I'll help you out. And then it'll direct you to the theme you want to have. The theme is what your blog looks like. So on my site, mine's a customized theme, but this is sort of how it looks like. The most similar looking theme to my site is Astra. With Astra, you can build on Astra and create your own landing page here. My homepage, you can create something like that using Astra. And with WordPress Builder, the native builder in WordPress, you can build a landing page like this. And then when you go to your blog, you can create your blog page like this. Now you might be like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I had to like create all this stuff. You don't. With Astra, it's a simple design. You can get started there. Don't make it hard for you. When I first started, I just had a, a free theme and that's all I used. And I, I worked hard on creating graphics and writing and understanding my audience. That was my focus. That's what you want to focus on. Now that you have all that in place, you know your niche, you started your Bluehost account. Now you have hosting and a WordPress site. You're in the back end of WordPress. I think this is a good time to show you my new niche site. Now, why am I calling this a niche site and not like a mom blog or a blog? As you become more familiar with blogging, you're going to hear people talk about niche sites. These are our side hustle sites. These are not our main sites. And these niche sites are focused on one monetization strategy, which is affiliate marketing. These niche sites don't have an email list most likely, and they don't rely on an audience basically to comment and share their post. They're strictly with affiliate marketing and ranking their blog on Google so that people searching for whatever go to their niche site and they get paid through the products that they recommend. Some niche sites also use ads. They display ads on their site and then they get paid for people coming to their site and they get ad impressions, all right? So those are all what I feel niche sites do to make money. As a niche site grows, they may start an email list and then they might start other ways to monetize like having a digital product let me show you my site so here it is all in its glory it's just a regular typical blog but it is focused on cleaning and as you can see my logo was developed by my daughter and the name even she thought of the name sponge hacks i tell about the story in the about page so you can go visit there that's just a picture of my daughter a couple years ago when she was much younger i'm gonna probably swap that out with my picture and her might be better it's kind of confusing when you go to the site and it's a kid, but they're not writing this content. <laughs> so these are my blog posts on here. It is all about sponge cleaning or cleaning hacks. It's very niche to that. And I am checking out different types of cleaning or checklist based blog post ideas. And here is another kind of blog post idea here. And then basic cleaning supplies, cleaning schedule, cleaning routine, all of those things that this blog could support. Cleaning tips here. I've been working on this blog for a while. It hasn't been a month, but this one, this, this blog post is slowly taking off on Pinterest right here. It's already getting lots of shares here and some on other 
platforms, which is kind of nice. But I am marketing mostly on Pinterest. This site has its own Pinterest account. So I'm doing a strategy there. And I hope over time, if this site grows with income and traffic, that I can make this a case study for sure for my students and Ready, Set, Blog for traffic. And so if you have any questions, specific questions about my niche site, post them down below. I might do another video, but I thought I would share that with you. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you quickly the back end of the site and then show you how you can start your first blog post. All right, this is the back end of my WordPress site. All WordPress sites will have a back end that looks similar to this, where there you're going to have your menu on the side here and things on top here where you can add your gravatar, make your profile so that you can have everything nice here to have your picture and who you are. A lot of blogs in the beginning, whatever you decide. I start my sites with Bluehost under like admin. So it's going to say hi admin. So I want to change that. But then this is where things happen. You're going to do most of your work on the back end of your blog. This is it. Posts is where you're going to spend most of your time and media where you're going to upload a lot of images, your pin images, your feature images, things like that. You're going to monitor comments or you can decide not to have comments. I do not have comments on my blog, especially because it's brand new. Maybe if it grows fast, I might put some comments on, but I don't want to get bothered with that. A lot of people just use it to spam. I'm not interested in monitoring that, although there are plugins and things to help you with. And then here's where you can customize your site and then plugins. If you don't know what plugins are, they're just little boosters, little add-ons you can add to your site. So if with comments, if I want to filter the spam, there's a plugin for that to filter the spam. If I want to add my Google Analytics, I can add a plugin to show my Google Analytics. There's little things like that. If you want to do related posts and have a little ticket underneath and have all your related posts, you can have a plugin for that. My suggestion is don't go crazy with your plugins. Keep it minimal. Have one or two or three, maybe five at the most, and that's it, because it does slow your site down. You don't want people to wait to load up a blog post of yours or to go to your page. You want things to run fast. Creating your first blog post, I know it looks kind of funny this way, but you go here to add new, and this is where you can add your blog post, and it's showing you the editor. So WordPress has this cool drag and drop editor. You can look through this if you want, but I'm just gonna show you right now. It's very simple. Once you source your blog topics, then you can start writing. Let's just just play, for example, if you're doing a knitting blog, I would definitely start with some kind of fun blog post that would attract people to want to come to your site. So give them help. So it might be a knitting pattern or it might be a knitting tutorial, or you can do something like your favorite knitting patterns or something like that. And you can call it instead of calling it my favorite knitting patterns, which is very internal, you can do something like top, you know, top 15 knitting patterns that and then I don't know, you can knitting patterns that easy or easy and fun, something like that, where where you're giving some value to your content. It's about people who want to learn about knitting. You can share the top knitting patterns, go on Pinterest, see what the top knitting patterns people are doing, cardigans, scarves. They might be doing little animals, things like that, and start accumulating that content. You know, one, the first one can be a knitting pattern for cardigans. Go to another blog and attribute that. Say, I found this cool knitting pattern on such and such blog and link to it. If you want to link to it, say, I found this cool tip on, let's link to my blog, Twins Mommy, where she shares how she made a scarf for her twins. No, not a scarf, a hat. Let's pretend I have a blog post on that. I would click on the link button and then I would paste it in. So if you find it online, but let's just pretend it's twinsmommy.com slash knitting. And then I'd press the arrow and then that people can go to that if they want to in the blog post. So if we save it and preview it, my theme shows this. It's a basic theme, so it has the title, and then my first sentence right there. And I have sharing, so this is a plugin. That's one I use. <laughs> so you can see this is how I would link to other people. If you're sharing 15 knitting patterns and you haven't done them and you can't show them online, then you can obviously go to other sites and use those examples. Just make sure that you're linking to them. And that's also good blogging practice and it helps you grow your blog. Those people realize that you link to them, they'll go to your site and they might recommend your site if you have really good content. There you go, that's how you start a blog. You start your first blog post. I walked you through my niche site to see what I'm doing. I am hoping to grow that blog and use that as a case study. If you found this helpful, give me a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.